weak, strong. Energy that flows through all creation. Stillness, motion. All that exists born from its never-ending flow. The balance between rage and serenity. Duality. A state of being capable of drawing out power beyond your limitations. An ability to overwhelm a power greater than your own, or live on despite a mortal wound. These ever-flowing cycles are the key to drawing out the power of Tao. While looking in at a first glance, ignoring the excessive violence and provocative imagery of the story, the early chapters of the manga seem to establish the powers of Tao as a relatively simple and standard take on Chi or Aura, while doing very little to set itself apart from the many greats of Shonen, or even really just its other dark trio contemporaries. But what the latter chapters and season finale of Hell's Paradise managed to accomplish, I think not only redeems it, but firmly establishes the power of Tao, and as far and away, one of the greatest power systems in modern anime history. And it all started with a little girl one-shotting Ninja Saitama. Well, as early as chapter 17, we begin to see a more blatant manifestation of Tao as a power system. I believe it's important to go back as far as chapter 1 to fully understand the picture that Yuji Kaku was trying to paint, and how this grim world relates to the mystical powers of Tao. Now, for anyone who hasn't read or watched Hell's Paradise, this manga tends to break away from almost every standard anime convention, at pretty record speeds. Be it seemingly important side characters constantly getting obliterated into red splotches on the walls, or the many odd pseudo-religious entities and locations filling the landscape of the titular island, from the second you turn onto page one, something just seems off. At every twist in the adventure, starting all the way back at the protagonist himself, Gabimaru the Hollow, everything just seems a bit odd. Gabimaru is a weird character. To say the very least, he's certainly no typical shonen underdog, and within the first 25 or so chapters, he basically goes from challenge to challenge, repeatedly bodying his obstacles and even underestimating his own godlike abilities. The series quite literally opens with Gabimaru being so strong that no matter what they try, be it beheading, bulls tugging at his legs, or straight up boiling him alive, regular people just can't do anything to him even in spite of the fact that he had actively accepted his own death. And if it wasn't for Sagiri, an executioner responsible for his sentencing, offering Gabimaru a chance at an absolute pardon from the shogunate by finding the elixir of life and a chance to see his wife again, he genuinely might have just gone on to be one of the strongest things to even exist, period, outside of the Shinsenkyo. And keep in mind, this is all just chapter one. However, just as we all enter this story expecting Gabimaru to be Kirito meets Naruto in all the worst possible ways, Yuji Kaku subverts our expectations, and our overpowered ninja one-punch man, who up to this point had only been as much as scratched by one of the strongest members of the Yamada Asaimon, suddenly thrust into this strange world on a hunt for his pardon, and is not only challenged, but gravely wounded at least by normal person's standards. Just seven chapters in, we are introduced to the strange, misshapen, humanoid creatures known as Gate Guardians. And while Gabimaru does go on to incinerate an entire slew of them, he's still the protagonist, it sets the tone firmly in place for just how dangerous these ungodly powers of the island can be. And from there, things definitely don't get any better for Gabimaru. Despite his insane strength, from his tough-fought battles against the warrior monk Rokurota, where he claimed a single hit might instantly kill him, to his eventual matchups with more divine beings on the island, such as the Tensin and Doshi, our protagonist constantly finds himself overwhelmed and completely outmatched with his strange, otherworldly magic. It gets so bad that, as I said in Chapter 17, a seemingly young and helpless girl named Mei literally body slams Gabimaru and punches him hard enough to make him spit up blood on the spot. So in just the span of about 
25 or so chapters, Gabimaru went from a seemingly unkillable Giga Chad to getting completely folded by everything he runs into, like some sort of Souls game. So how exactly did such a sudden shift in the balance occur? And what if I told you it all stemmed back to Tao? You see, Tao is described as the source of all things, physical and spiritual. The ability to tap into Tao could be seen as the ability to manipulate the very laws of existence themselves, bending something innate to everything and everyone. From the rocks to the trees and even humanity, it flows through and connects all things, to the extent that some characters who have no concept of Tao, its manipulation or even its greater function, can tap into a fraction of its innate ability for abnormal superhuman abilities. That would include the likes of Yuzuriha's poison consumption and control, Sagiri's strange water-breathing-like technique, and Xion's odd ability to see, although he's completely blind. This form of Tao is basic and unrefined, often only drawing upon one or two of its most simple aspects. In fact, it seems that none of them even know its true name, referring to it as different ones such as Chi, Waves, or even Ninjutsu to some extent. This crude form of Tao could be described as a very basic understanding of the principles of the middle way, or even just an unconscious use of them while taking pieces and muddled lessons from the humans who passed it down over the years, creating impure derivatives of the fundamental force manipulation, like those above. And from the statements found in the manga, although these characters couldn't possibly be described as having the basics of Tao completely mastered, they're consistently portrayed as some of the strongest cast members, even from the beginning, with Gabimaru himself even stating that Sagiri, someone who could barely tap into real, basic Tao aura for a chapter without coughing up blood, was undoubtedly stronger than him, due to the fact that her use of Tao was the most pure he had ever seen up to that point. And from the moment Gabimaru set foot onto the Shinsenkyo, he would have to encounter a variety of increasingly more and more proficient Tao users. Rokurota, who Gabimaru couldn't even harm, a Tao user. The Doshi, all of which he would need Tao to defeat, Tao users. And the Tensen, well, they're literally the embodiment of Tao. So as you might have guessed, little girl May just so happens to be Tao user. You see, people like these, except Rokurota, you can just sort of forget about him, all have access to the much more mastered form of Tao, one they can control and apply in a variety of more focused ways. And it isn't until chapter 34 of the manga and episode 11 of the anime, where Gabimaru finally grasps the core concept of Tao and awakens to its true power in the heat of battle, finally giving us a chance to understand the powers of Tao alongside our protagonist. As a quick aside though, when he literally says, I got the gist, and sort of just unlocks the main power system to the series, and pinker haired girl just says, Big Tao. Yeah, all the little mini L's aside, Gabimaru is still the goat. But after tapping into his innate Tao abilities, it's explained that he and assumedly anyone else in the world of Hell's Paradise can accomplish this through embracing weakness and strength in unison. The core philosophy at play is that Tao is the fruit of strength sown by the seeds of weakness. A Taoist and also Buddhist philosophy in real life religion that suggests only by accepting balance, the giving and taking, strength and weakness, or even just life and death, can attain proper peace. By embodying his own literal physical strength and powerful desire, with the physical weaknesses and openness he feels for his wife, in perfect harmony with one another, Gabimaru became balanced and at a peace with the universe. And as such, he could begin to see and alter the threads that connect and intertwine with it. Which, in the world of Hell's Paradise, those threads are, of course, Tao. And in a similar vein to something like Chakra or Nin, characters who have gained access to pure control of Tao, not only just one of its derivatives, can pull upon the limitless pool of energy they have to coat them like a protective shell. This aura they produce, flowing out from a center point from right above the navel, referred to as the Tandon, greatly amplifies with attack and defense. In Gabimaru's case, bringing him from weaker than the Doshi 
to literally one-shotting them upon unlocking. He also makes the claim in that same chapter that, even with just this basic grasp of Tao, he believes he could fight on equal footing with Tencent. I think we have little reason to doubt this claim since Gabimaru literally just battled a member of the group in the prior chapters and would likely have at least some grasp of the power of their human form. Considering Gabimaru was weaker than Sagiri and Rokurota before this point, who were both much weaker than any member of the Tencent, that would certainly be quite the job. And in terms of abilities granted purely by Tao, to anyone who can simply unlock it, their natural aura can be manipulated in similar ways to Nen from Hunter x Hunter, focused into areas or body parts to create small air blasts, barriers, or to be channeled into limbs and weapons for additional power. They can also be used to suppress other forms of Tao, make someone literally invisible by suppressing their own Tao, or instantly disassemble other weaker Tao constructs, like what Gabi Maru did to the Doshi's arm in episode 11. And it also grants power very similar to Sage Mode or Observation Hockey, allowing the users to read out the flow of Tao in an area, map out landscape, and even detect enemy movements and weak points within a battle. However, this can obviously be taken a step further, in the form of complete Tao mastery just like the Tencent have done. The Tencent, for all those still unacquainted, are a group of gender-swapping clones made of a single being known as Lord Tencent. They rule over the Shinsen Kyo like gods from the middle of the island known as Horai. Each of the Tencent have developed the ability of perfect control and transmutation of Tao, in ways that surpass what the main cast can do, at least up to this point in the anime. They have achieved this power through the five methods of immortality. Doin, which involves training through physical exercise with the aim at improving better Tao circulation. Taisoku, which involves training through breathing techniques. Shuitsu, which involves training through meditation. Shuten, which involves training through pathways of the body, blood, and organs. And lastly, the most infamous from this manga, Bochu Jutsu, literally meaning the art of the bedchambers, involving training through intimacy. <laughs> this training is said to be the most important since it requires a partner of the opposite chi, simply meaning the two partners must have a difference in aura, be it a man or a woman, feeling calm or irrational, or simply two different Tao auras coming together to create balance. By joining an intercourse, this chi of both yin and yang join together to strengthen the two partners Tao in unison. Bochu Jutsu can also be used to understand a person's Tao at a deeper level. And according to Rain, one of the strongest members of the Tencent, cooperation is essential on partners' behalf in order for this training to take full effect. Therefore, the two practitioners must take each other's feelings, desires, and pleasures fully into account to create this harmony. <laughs> okay, now I'm sure you're clearly wondering, what kind of crazy power-up does doing it? as the manga puts so eloquently, possibly provide a Tao user. And to avoid any spoilers for the rest of the manga, Tao can basically do anything once it's mastered at this level. The members of the Tencent can heal from grievous wounds, generate elements, create illusions that affect all five of your senses, use telekinetic powers that resemble the Force, instantly destroy and reassemble objects akin to alchemy from Full Metal Alchemist, shoot powerful magic blasts, and also stand in the air like a Bleach character too, just for the heck of it. Their abilities and powers are kind of entirely up to their imagination because Tao flows through all things in their world, so... With complete mastery and control of Tao, plus a millennia's worth of training, you could say, at their level, this creation to have any kind of technique is only really limited by the sheer quantity of Tao they possess. Of course, by mentioning it, I'm sure someone in the comments section would wonder what might happen if a Tau user was to run out of Tau. And while it's pretty unlikely that would happen, considering humans with control and mastery of Tau naturally regenerate and recuperate their lost Tau through just existing, if one was pushed to the limit using all their Tau unreasonably, their soul, memories, and very existence would be depleted, as Tau is directly tied to life force. So. Using too much could cost them all of these things, bringing about amnesia, complete comas, or even death. 
but I know by now you're asking yourself, what makes Tao so special and different? When something like Hatsu, Jutsu, or Curse Techniques could obviously accomplish anything I've listed here. And to that, I would have to answer with something very, very basic. Tau Affinities. Well, yes, magical spirit attacks made from willpower aren't too uncommon in a typical shonen battle system. And even the idea of special magic types in some form of a chart aren't really too original by themselves. What really sets Hell's Paradise apart from the other battle systems here is the way in which true interconnectivity was created between the many forms of Tau. To go into a little more detail, every user of Tau, whether they know it or not, displays an invisible characteristic within their natural aura. It could even be described as a part of their personality. A mystical trait they're either born with or develop that distinguishes their living Tau from all other Tau, like how every element on Earth is made by different ratios of protons and neutrons. It is natural to them and can't ever be changed or altered. In episode 12 of the anime, where the B-team of Sagiri, Yuzuriha, and Senta take on Mudan, a member of the Tensen, we see this on display, where Mudan, a complete master of Tao, denotes Yuzuriha's affinity for Earth Tao, and Sagiri being the natural counter to his own Tao in the form of Wood Tao. These statements set up the building blocks for Tao to be a system of checks and balances. And while Tao attributes don't seem to visually display themselves in any unique or special ways outside of advanced applications or crude ninpo, the five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, all interlink with one another, creating balance to conjoin in such a way that each attribute works fully and equally in sync with one another. To explain what I mean, we'll use Gabimaru here as our newly unlocked Tao example. Gabimaru is a natural user of Fire Tau. Inherently, any user of Fire Tau is the natural counter to a wielder of Metal Tau, and is naturally countered by Water Tau. While this concept isn't too original, just being a simple elemental weakness chart like the kind you'd see in Pokemon, what suddenly separates Hell's Paradise from systems like those with a secondary loop on this wheel, Sosei and Sokoku. Sosei, or the Restoration Cycle, replenishes and strengthens an individual's Tau through physical contact with a compatible element. Even if they're not a Tau user, this can bring out latent abilities natural to them in this world. This would allow Gabimaru's Tau to be refueled and bolstered by a user of Wood Tau, such as Sangiri. This can also work with the residual Tau imbued into weapons, enhancing the power of someone of the adjacent element by tapping into those lingering traces of Tau. For example, Gamimaru boosting Yuzuriha's Earth Tau imbued kunai knives with his Fire Tau in the manga. However, this method cannot offset the difference when the roles of Sosei are reversed, and that is called Sokoku. As demonstrated by Gamimaru's ineffective attack on Rain, even with Sagiri's Wood Tau infused sword because Rain's Earth Tau is naturally empowered by and consumes Gamimaru's Fire Tau. So, imagine for a moment that a system like this was in any other anime. Naruto suddenly winds up his ultimate win-style Rasen Shuriken, the biggest, baddest one he's ever made, with a whole Takno Jutsu speech and all, then he slams that thing dead on center mass of Sasuke, and he just walks out of it, like nothing happened. In fact, he's even better off because he just got hit by that move. Or if Gon gave up all of his power, turned into adult form Gon, charged up his biggest Jajan Ken in history, and then punched Killua in the face. And it just didn't do it. Unlike all other power systems in recent history, Tao keeps true to its roots and remains natural and intrinsic to the world that exists within, a balance of yin and yang. No matter how strong Gabimaru is or becomes, Fire Tao won't ever harm Earth Tao, and Earth Tao can't ever beat Metal Tao. This rock, paper, scissors style system that infuses the innate, limited pool of Chakra with the control and vibe of Nin, a splash of hockey and a dash of alchemy with its own strict and unique rules about strength and weakness, create an environment that promotes a variety of interesting battles and setups, where a number of different characters can be given the spotlight. Just like how Gabimaru, with all his help and protagonist powers, would never be able to harm Rain in the manga because of their access to Earth Tao, she can't ever change. 
Sagiri, with her innate wood towel, could almost certainly wound and damage Rain with all of her advantages, even though she's just a side character. Combine the fact that no character is left behind in this system with the fact that anyone could hypothetically generate a wide array of techniques and abilities that are only really limited by how much of their own natural life force they're willing to gamble away, and you've just created one of the most fun, high-risk, high-reward team battle systems in Shonen. And all of this is to go without mentioning the special final extension of Tau, which only those related to the Tensen seem to have access to, referred to only as Flower Tau or Plant Tau. But delving into this sixth special attribute, which grants functional immortality along with a slew of other unique abilities, goes far, far beyond the scope of this video. If you'd like to see a part two featuring all the complexities of complete Tau mastery and the transcendence of this system through Flower Tau, then let me know down below. If this video hits 13,000 likes, part two will be put into production immediately. And if you've got any more ideas about fun topics, about the strengths or abilities of your favorite series, let me know those down too in the comments. Thanks.